Well, in this video, we're going to talk about the number one thing that can make or break your success in terms of selling stuff online. I wonder what the guesses could be, you know? Well, it's got to be the copy. It's got to be the offer. If you guessed offer, that's, that's actually a pretty good guess. That might actually be the number one thing. Maybe this is like number 1.07. Not quite number two. Maybe not number one. Pretty important, though. Here's a number one thing that can really make or break anything. Doesn't matter the business. And that is this. Look, we're back at the whiteboard, by the way. What could be better? Um, that is time. This is a clock right here. I just like drawing stuff, okay? Your online business campaign is, is time. And specifically your ability to resist the urge. Um, oh, whoa, look at there. Oh, you can't see that. I just got some notifications. So my stream quality was updated How about that. <laughs> so more specifically, it's your ability to resist the urge to bail too quickly. All right. So let's go back here to the, uh, to the computer. All right. So here's the deal. I want you to just sort of blindly trust what I'm telling you now, which, you know, I mean, why wouldn't you? I'm an internet marketer. We all have such stellar reputations, said nobody ever. Um, but seriously, just for a minute, you know, let's just pretend that this is definitely true. All right. First, let's pretend that the alt book and they can opt in like right there. So I always heard they were bad. I was like, you know, everybody says the all knowing they, right, which we need to conclude does not exist. But, you know, I'd heard the all knowing they, they say, the Facebook lead ads are no good, and you shouldn't use them. And the only time that they're effective, according to the all-knowing they, is if you're doing something where you generate a Facebook lead ad, and you get the person's number, and you immediately call them. So if you have like a landscaping business or whatever. And so I was like, okay, well, they said it. It must be right. And then one day, I decided to test it. Actually, I'm such a rocket surgeon. I've, I tested it with great success one time and then wrote it off as a fluke and then decided not to do it again for years and then recently retested it and then this happened, which is still kind of embarrassing. I don't know why I like to embarrass myself on these videos, but check this out, all right? So a while back, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna see, you know? I mean, what if these guys are wrong? I'm gonna try running some of these Facebook lead ads. And I'm gonna see what happens. So I did, and, and I'll show you the ads in a minute, but like the funnel was this, okay? They would see the ad, all right? I'll show you the ad and everything in a sec. And then they would like fill out the little form thingy. So FT stands for form thingy. That um, incidentally, that, that's a hybrid of a scientific technical term and a medical term, form thingy, just for all of you guys that are wondering about the use of uh, you know proper marketing diction and vocabulary in today's video, that's the origin scientific slash medical term form thingy okay so anyway you know they see your ad they put their name and email address and phone number in the form thingy and then this was my funnel all right i was telling them that i was going to send them a video an on-demand class all right and so that's a fancy way of saying video on a web page but on-demand class sounds a lot better this by the way if you ever do these they really do need to like be good you can't just you know, put a crappy video on a web page, but that was a whole funnel, right? So what I did was when they opted in, I didn't immediately send them here, all right? I wanted to measure whether or not they would actually click on emails that took them there because I wanted to challenge the theory made and uh, whatever extolled by the all-knowing they, you know? I was like, let's just see. Let's see if there's shenanigans involved. Which, I mean, shenanigans is a strong word, especially on a Monday. That's when I'm making this for you. But still, I'm, you know, we're all growing up here. Okay, so that was uh, that was my funnel. All right. So here's the ad. Okay, and I didn't spend a lot of money on this thing. Um, incidentally, this was driving people. That's what the ad looked like. Hopefully my screen show looks like it is. All right, so I had a couple of just random pictures. Like, you know, here's one of me. Yeah, and here's another one of me with just, you know, same headline, how to close more high ticket clients, uh, how to close more high ticket clients, you know, just testing different images and stuff. And then there's some body copy. And so instead of going to my web page, right? Now, now look, watch on the screen. All right. So instead of going to my web page, when they click this, this is what they see. Okay. And so this is like 
most of y'all know what this is. You're like, yeah, dude, I know what a Facebook lead ad is. But just in case, you know, I'm trying to have some courtesy here. So they're like, all right, you know, this opens up underneath the ad. And then they, generally speaking, this will be pre-populated, which is pretty cool, you know. And so that, like, really gets a lot of people to opt in for you. So you get pretty cheap leads, which is sweet. I was like, hey, you know, okay. Right? So that's pretty good. So anyway, they, they have their answers there. And then... Like, you have to have this, so you have, like, your privacy policy and stuff. And then they can hit on submit. And when they do, then, like, if you want to, you can put a link to the thing that they're requesting. I did not. I just sent them to my podcast. I literally, like, they had to check their email in order to get the thing I was advertising. The reason why is I wanted to know, man. I wanted to know if these things were bogus or not. Right? So here's what I done made, okay? Uh, Where are we? That. Okay. So... This, and I can't remember, unfortunately, I think this was nine emails over a period of four hours, or it was four emails over the period of nine hours. And the point of every email was, hey, man, here's the thing you opted in for, right? That was it. It was like, here's the class you opted in for. Go check it out. And so I deliberately, you know, and by the way, if they clicked it, obviously I'd quit sending them those emails. So the minute they quit, clicked it, you know, you did the did the whole automated email thing. So I'm like, all right, let's just have a look at this and see. Okay, so I got some I got some leads. These are um, just to walk you through the campaign, just so you'll know it was nothing like you know rocket science. I, I tried a whole bunch of different audiences, the usual stuff that I teach. I had two different campaigns here. And um, we ended up spending $543.22. And uh, the Facebooks told us that, you know, we didn't do very well in terms of selling stuff. They told us we had 135 leads. All right. And so number one, 135 leads isn't enough to draw any sort of conclusive data from whatsoever. Um, But I did anyway, because, you know, why why make intelligent decisions when you can make emotionally rash decisions, you know? Come on. So anyway, here's what ended up happening. All right. Um, I mean, sort of erase them in this crap for us here. So it'll look a little bit better. Yada, 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 yada. All right. That is also a technical term. Whatever. So right here, this little part, I measured it. And it was less than 30% of the people. All right who opted in actually clicked these emails. So I want you to think about this. You know, according to the Facebooks, right, we had 135 leads and I'm emailing them like, you know, it's not, you know, once every week. I mean, I kept emailing like, hey, here's the thing. Like, it wasn't uncool. It was just, I want to make sure you get what you asked for, you know, kind of like trying to be as nice about it as possible. Less than 30% ever clicked. Like, same, like, instant response, less than 30% click. So I came to the conclusion that these don't work. I was like, nah, these are bad. So I turned it off. So I spent, what did we have up here? Um, I spent eh, 543 bucks. Now, check this out. As y'all know, just absolutely wacky about this. Uh, these guys here, the old Zag metrics. So it turns out, incidentally, I can't remember the date range. Well, here's the date range I actually ran the cam- campaign from. It started on September 4th and it kind of picked up traction and right around like the 11th of September or whatever, I was like, ah, and turned it off. (laughs) So it ran for like three days or whatever. So during that time, you'll notice there's a discrepancy, you know, Segmetrics, this is my analytics thing. I trust the data here a lot more than what Facebook sends me. Segmetrics says, all right, dude, you got 122 leads. Facebook says I got 135. I'm trusting these guys, but check it out. They ended up selling them $2,900 worth of stuff which is great, which is in that date range. Of course, I was only paying attention to what percentage of them watch the class as opposed to what percentage of them actually give me money, but here's the magic, okay? And so the first thing I wanna do, actually, before I show you the magic, is show you why this can be used as, at least to a degree, some sort of evidence that we might wanna test what they say. Don't have to disregard they, but maybe like test and see for yourself whenever they say something because I spent, all right, 543 bucks. I got $2,900. So that's a pretty good, you know, return on investment. Plus I got 122 leads, all right? So what we can conclude here is this they business, this they business ain't no good. All right, we don't want to mess around with they anymore because that was wrong. 
and I didn't even do anything particularly cool, you know. So they, we're going to ixnay on the a they. That totally, this, I don't know, how could you say that in Pig Latin? Ixnay on the a they, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. We're not going to pay attention to they, right? So that's the first thing we can surmise, that you probably should test this. The second thing is this, right? Famous redneck last words here, which is going to be, yeah, it's going to be like, hey, y'all, watch this. Right, that, that is literally, it's oftentimes in many cases, the last words that a redneck will utter. Hey, y'all, watch this. Okay, but seriously, check this out. This is pretty cool. So now, remember earlier, I was like, the thing that you got to have, like the one thing that's going to make it or break it, is going to be this ability to wait, this ability to have patience, to take your time and not get all freaked out. This is my incredibly good clock now with more numbers than earlier. Right? Here's why I say this. If I say, okay, you know, I got those dudes in this date range. It was really, you know, right around here, this date range, but whatever. Um, I'm going to say, all right, seg metrics. Show me everybody. Show me what people done bought after this date range. Now, again, you know, we're only talking about 122 people, so I'm not expecting a gazillion dollars here. But let's see what happened after that date range happened. All right. And of course, we're on camera. So there's there's a very high likelihood that due to this being, you know, I'm currently streaming this live to you on Monday. What's the 19th, I think? Um, oh, yeah, it worked. Okay. But but th it really does. If you do this live, it increases your chances of disaster significantly. Look, it got me another $8,100 in revenue. All right. So had I just been like, eh, to heck with it. I'm never going to follow up with these people again. And that's exactly how I talk when I'm frustrated. I talk like that most of the time, really. Um, I would, I'd would, have been out 8100 bucks, dude. I mean, that's in addition to whatever it was, the 2900 So we're getting close to now $11,000 in revenue from a $543.22 ad spend. Here's the deal. The title of this video, I think, if I, if I remember it accurately, is the one thing you need to be doing like right now. That is test Facebook lead formats, right? If, if you get them and you have a moderately okay follow-up sequence that's more than, you know, three emails and then you quit, you'll probably do pretty good. I mean, you know, I didn't do anything particularly amazing here to make all of this stuff happen. Generally speaking, what I like to do is a little formula um, that will look like this, all right? By the way, I forgot to pitch. Good, what kind of person am I? All right, so if you want us to build like your email follow-up systems for you, run your marketing for you, just like do all that stuff for you, go to roas.org forward slash one nine. That's how I track that you came from this video. roas.org forward slash one nine 19 forward slash 19. That's the number 19 roas.org forward slash 19. You can schedule a time to talk to my team. We'll tell you if we can help you. And, and if we can, we'll tell you how, and we'll be very, very nice to you regardless. It's not one of those strategy session things where, you know, we try to put you in some high pressure crap like that. All right. So here's how I actually sold stuff to those leads. Okay. All right. So here we go back to the computer. All right. So generally speaking, what I'll do is depending on the type of funnel, and there's there's a zillion ways to do this, right? So let's, uh, let's say we're doing this for people who are selling services. Uh, that's at the top of my mind right now because I just onboarded a client who was in professional service, specifically in the medical industry, okay? So we're gonna build one of these for, for her, in fact. So your ad says, all right, free book. It's a download, right? So free whatever how to relieve headaches. And so this is gonna be how to get the thing you want without stuff that's bad, right? And so it's a free PDF or a free ebook or whatever it may be, it's downloadable, all right? And so that happens. Then what we can do is we send them to, you know, an ad that looks about like this, up and her, right? And so, you know, you got your, uh, you got your Facebook lead format. So all we're doing, you know, we're, that means nothing fancy, right? Personally, I like to send them somewhere else right here. Not many people click that, by the way, at the end of the ad. So you'll get a very small percentage of people actually go to your website from the ad. But I like just to send them like to a YouTube channel or to a podcast or something so I can track whether or not they're getting the thing they requested via email. That's just the weird analytical thing in my brain. I like to do that so it gives me a little better idea of what to do here, okay, which is in the email part. So free book, free PDF, whatever. It's all downloadable. All right, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna send them into, I call this a click sequence. 
All right, so click, CL stands for click, S stands for sequence. This is generally a series of emails whose whole mission is to get them to click on a thing, all right? And the purpose of the thing is to get them to behaviorally identify their interest, all right? So if in this particular case, for example, this is offering an on-demand class, on how to close more high ticket clients. Now there is something I want to show to you here, which is very, very important. Um, and this is the difference in terms of like attracting uh, uh, qualified people versus non-qualified people. It sounds weird to talk about other human beings that way, so I don't mean it uncool. You get what I mean. Uh, the, the thing you're giving away matters. Right, so in our case, you know, we, we sell more higher end stuff. So if this were, were to say right here, like watch this if you want your first high ticket client, we would have gotten a completely different person. All right, so that's important. Like the thing you're giving away really, really matters in terms of the caliber or quality, so to speak, of who you're attracting. Okay, so if they click on that thing, what that thing is going to do is the thing, all right, so this is the click, it's going to make an offer. And I like, for me personally, we like to always make these valuable, right? So the offer itself needs to be valuable, like, you know, an on-demand class. It's the oldest trick in the book. I always make the joke, you know, we're going to use that oldest trick in the book on you. The old demonstrate, you can help people by actually helping them. That'll get them. You know, so that's what we do. All right. And so you're clicking that, you're just measuring to see if they click. Now, here's the thing. Number one, thing number one, most people are not like, let's say this is a three-day sequence or whatever. Most people won't actually click it, okay? That's normal. Number two, most people, most of the ones who do click it, they won't take you up on your offer. Dude, it doesn't matter if your offer is like, get you know this thing for one cent and the thing is a freaking Shetland pony or whatever, they're still not gonna buy it. It's just human nature. People are, they procrastinate, right? So the magic happens here, and that is knowing what to do. So. Let's say this is three days and they never click, right? So this answer, like, do they click to see the thing? And the answer is no. Uh, in this case, what we do, all right, and our team builds all this stuff for you, by the way. So again, like go to roas.org forward slash 19 if you want us to do that for you. Um, yeah, it's on this site there. All right, so what we'll do is we'll create another piece of content and we'll just have another, you know, three or four day click sequence. So I just do CS. And all these emails say is like, Hey man, I made this thing for you and you can go check it out here. It shows you how to do the thing that's related to the stuff you opted in to find out about. You know, so we're if like, if this, for example, if our ad is a free book about gardening, then the very first thing that, you know, we're giving them is the gardening book. And if we know that also one thing that gardeners are crazy about is picking the right fertilizer, then this content right here might be, you know, a video on how to find the right fertilizer. And they all might be selling the exact same offer. Generally speaking, they are, unless you have like, you know, a really complicated, not complicated, but like a, a really diverse, as my man Brendan Burchard would say, um, oh, what the hell does he call it? Um, integrated product suite. It's, that's a cool way of saying multiple products, you know? So, but generally speaking, if you only have a few things, like all the offers point to the same thing, right? So we'll keep doing that until they click. Now let's say, all right, that someone actually does click on one of these things, all right? Huzzah! Now we know, okay, if we get old cousin Eddie here, that's who, our, <laughs> that's who we're calling our prospect now. Old cousin Eddie, all right, he's got his hat on, okay, he's drinking the cold Coors Light, but it's like the big kind, the 24 ounce. No, it's a Bud Light because that's a 25 ounce. I actually, make they come in 25 ounce cans. I read that. I don't know that from experience. All right, so this is old cousin Eddie. He opts in and he clicks. Holy guacamole. He actually clicks. Woohoo! All right. Now, is Cousin Eddie going to buy? Probably not. It doesn't matter if our offer is amazing. He's not going to buy. This is where most people would be like, Frank, I got 37 leads and no one bought anything. It's the end of the world, to which I say, great, go get a job. All right, because that's you're, you're not in business if that's where your mind is. You're thinking too immediate. There's no long-term thought there. That's normal for Cousin Eddie not to buy. People procrastinate. It's the internet, dude. Like, I can't believe people have watched this far of this video with the unbelievable amount of distraction that you have. I'm truly honored that you have, but like, seriously, we never want to take their attention for granted, right? So our brain is going, okay, 
This guy clicked. Surely it means he definitely wants it. No, it just means he's interested in the outcome. Um, but the fact that he didn't buy, by no means, is indicative of, of him not wanting it. The fact that he clicks means he's interested in the result you can provide. The fact that he didn't take the action you wanted him to, and remember, we're talking about, once again, cousin Eddie here. This is all cousins are named Eddie. The fact that he did click is indicative of the fact, yeah, I said indicative multiple times now, um, that he's interested in the outcome you can provide. So one of the things that we'll build out and that worked well for me in this particular example is I know he's interested probably because he clicked the damn thing. So what I'll do now is I'll put some sort of what's called a countdown sequence in place right here. And usually it'll be like, hey, Eddie, you know, if you get that gardening, uh, if you get that gardening product today, you know, if you order before Thursday at, at noon, you can have this wheelbarrow as a bonus or whatever, and I'll do whatever I can to ethically incentivize Eddie to go ahead and order now. And so that right there, that causes a lot more people to buy. And usually speaking, like if this is three days or whatever, you know, day one, day two, day three, usually all the sales are going to come on day three at like an hour before the deadline. It's just human nature. Now, if he never buys, you know what we do is we just recycle the whole thing. We just put him in another thing that's like, hey, Eddie, you want to check out this video on how to choose the right fertilizer? Or you want to check out this video on, I don't know, how to, I don't really know much about gardening. So how to do other gardening stuff. And that's kind of it. Now, it's, a, it's an oversimplification, but here's the thing. All right, this is what can mess people up. Uh, the first thing that's going to mess you up is not doing this. If you're not doing this, you're just leaving money on the table. I mean, you might as well just be like burning it. You know, seriously, this, if we didn't do this in our business, I would be eating, uh, I don't know, ramen noodles, which I actually like ramen noodles. Uh, but nonetheless, I would have, I'd be broke like, if we didn't do this. This is our entire business is, is fueled by this level of follow-up. Your competitors aren't doing it to the degree that you can. I can tell you that because I know what everybody's doing. I'm on everybody's list and I'm the guy that a lot of people come to to fix their stuff. So I look at everybody's things. I know nobody's really doing this, which is great. So if you just do like a kind of okay job of this type of follow-up and put your focus here instead of on trying to get more followers or instead of being like, what picture should I use on my ad? Or instead of like, maybe I need to make a bigger promise in my sales letter and start bending the rules a little bit, ixnay on that whole plan, by the way, right? Just follow up a little bit better. You'll probably make a lot more sales. That would be my guess if I were to speculate. My speculation would be that uh, that's going to increase, increase your revenue more than anything. And, all right, the frequency of communication greatly outweighs the importance of the cleverness of the communication itself. Like, if you're on my list, you'll notice that I'm like, hey, go watch this. It's pretty good. Hope you like it. See you later. And it's that. So don't be driving yourself crazy about, oh man, I got to write the perfect email and everything's got to be unbelievably hard hitting and stuff. No, you write your email just like you would communicate with a friend. You know, when you send someone a text message, it's not 35 paragraphs, you know, it's usually like two sentences. Emails, if I'm sending you an email, I'm like, dude, you want to go see a movie on Friday? Like in the event that we can actually go to a movie one day, um, it would probably say something like, dude, you want to go see that new Dwayne Johnson movie on a Friday? And that would be it. You know, it wouldn't be, here are the 75 benefits of why we should go see the Dwayne Johnson. So I guess the other thing is, I just said the Dwayne Johnson. The other thing is, when you're doing your messaging, understand that every media, like email itself is a media, SMS is a media, video is a media, blogging is a media, social media, ads and posts. They're all forms of different communication channels. Let's call them media. Every one of them has a different way to communicate with the prospect where their brain is like, this communication style is appropriate for this medium. Short to the point, simple, imperfect. That's what email is, all right? Don't trip yourself up when trying to make it perfect. All right, hope you found this helpful as longer than I intended it to be. If you want us to build this stuff for you, just take over your marketing. Uh, go to roas.org forward slash one nine. That's 19. That'll help me know you came from this video or just roaz.org in general. If you don't want me to be able to track, fine. You know, whatever. <laughs> as long as we can help you, I don't care. If we, if we can, we'll tell you. And if we can't, we'll tell you too. And if we can, we'll tell you how. So there you go. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this and found it useful. Take it easy.